quite a scary big purchase so you may be seeing more videos from me to pay for it so please any adverts that you watch I would really appreciate it. I've decided to level up my sewing machine. My current brother machine is with the engineer it broke I've had it a year ago I did do a video about it back 2020. Bought it during lockdown hadn't seen it or anything but I didn't want to spend too much money on a machine I hadn't seen so it's done the job I've used it a lot but after one year one a part has broken on it. It will get fixed under the warranty so it will be returned to me but who knows when because brother have that I haven't got the part in stock and they don't know when it's going to be fixed. So I decided that, okay now is the time to actually go and see a level up from that and get a demonstration on the machine, have a play on the machines and just have a browse. I wasn't going to buy anything just out of curiosity and research purposes and um, yeah that didn't last. I've come back with something. Do you want to take a peek? So I thought I'd unbox it. It had big giant staples on the top so I have taken them off but I haven't taken it out so I know you're just thinking just get on with it Hales. it is ta -da, a Juki DX7 now I've never used a Juki before but I've done I have done quite a bit of research and I wanted something which had a strong motor which could just cope with all kinds of fabrics from watching my channel you will have seen that I last year I made two wool coats, a raincoat, a denim jacket, some uh, I think last year or certainly like you before I did some cosplay things and so I use a variety of different types of fabrics and I have had issues and problems that I've come across in the past and the machines have rammed, they've got stuck, they haven't coped very well with the different kinds of fabrics and so when I looked although a lot of people are pro faff at the minute I did think about them but I didn't want a coloured machine and I wanted something heavyweight which was going to have a, a motor, a fast motor that could plough through all different types of fabrics and this seemed to do the job so enough faffing, let's get it out of the box. Right I will tilt you down. So I've um, with the now Juki do a DX5 which is virtually the same but you don't get the extension table so this is the DX7 it comes with the big extension table the knee lift and it has extra lights on the machine compared with the pre the lower down DX5 model um, so right so it has obviously the hard case and then it's kind of this pocket let's get closer so it's got this hard pocket which the accessories and things slot into so that's quite good so that's the knee lift um which i didn't think that i would use because i haven't used it much on my brother machine but he did the guy in the shop was really helpful actually and aside from the fact that he carried this down the road to my car which was very helpful because it's weighs quite heavy um this was really helpful when it came to like a, the, using the button hole for it over thick fabric to have the knee lift so you could then keep your hands on the fabric so that's the knee lift um, it also comes with so these are the feet can't remember off the top but it does come with it comes with the walking foot which is which actually this has a box feed um, system whereas it actually feeds the fabric through so I may not even need to use a walking foot but it's handy to have so oh DVD I'm not sure if we've got a DVD player anymore um, but the instruction manual cable now this is a special pedal I'm literally just home from the shop where I had the demonstration this is the pedal now one feature that this has is that I think you can you can program the foot pedal to do something and I think you can program it to do uh, one of like five things so obviously the blue you use the toe of your foot here for the go but you can use the heel of your foot to do a different function and you can either program the machine so when you hit the heel of your foot it will put the machine into reverse or there's like a locking stitch or that kind of thing um, but what the one I like to do is the thread cutter so there is a button on the machine um, like my brother machine there is a button you can press 
and is an automatic thread cutter so you don't have to like snap pull the fabric and snap off around the back and then use scissors to trim it down but with this you can program it so you sew so you press the go button use the heliful foot then to cut the threads and then the foot automatically the presser foot comes up by itself it's magic it's like hands free to another level so i'm really excited to get going with that you can also program the machine to do um like three stitches forward three stitches in reverse and then sew and then when you're at the end of your project if you press the reverse button if you program it you press the reverse button it will do those three stitches in reverse three stitches forward and then cut your threads so you can put there is a variety of things that you can program the machine for i need to obviously read the, mach the manual get it set up and have a go but obviously this is what i've learned what you can do with the machine and i'm excited to use it so I'll just lift the cover off so that's uh i'll put that down here sorry it's walking in front of the camera so here we go so here it is oh so it's obviously taped down so things don't move around so it's like um that's still okay though you sometimes get in shoe boxes and things that's just rubbish that needs to go and everything's taped in now my last machine when i bought my brother machine it was an x demonstration model so it wasn't brand brand new and i didn't get to peel any stickers off which is really exciting that i get to pick some stickers off because i'm the first person to use it it will not stay this shiny because i do batter my machines because i do believe in um if you're going to use a machine just use it and not be afraid of using it um, to get the job done so we've got the big handle here this lifts up here i'll get you in closer so you can you don't need to see my face you want to see the machine uh, are we in are we in there we go so there are a lot of stitches a lot of decorative stitches which I won't use, I'd be honest with you. I don't use a lot of decorative stitches. There's the, um, the spool holder here, obviously the bobbin. All in all, it looks like a, just a normal sewing machine. But once it's up and running, then I will show you some of the functions that it can do as well. So I will probably put all these different clips together in one video. This is filming, I'm filming this one on Saturday, just back from town with the machine but I want to get it up and running and then I can show you what else that it can do. So this is the instruction manual and it seems to be laid out quite clearly and fairly straightforward. My brother manual wasn't that great, it was quite confusing, but this is very visual, has pictures of everything. This just opens up like normal ones and then there's more feet in here because I was worried that I didn't include many feet. So they give you like a little mini screwdriver like a flat one so you can and i think you have to use that for actually changing the needle as well rather normally you just like turn the little wheel i think according to the instruction manual you have to use that one but i could be wrong this is a manual buttonhole foot so this one and the guy in the showroom he did show me how that works so if um I'll show you in a second that there is the automatic buttonhole foot where you slot the button in the back like my old machine slots the button in the back and then you can do it as a set size if you want to do a big buttonhole foot then you use the manual one and then there's, there's a way of doing that because I know when I've made a coat previously I use big buttons and I couldn't make a bus a big buttonhole foot even like on a manual override so this one I'm quite looking forward to that but this lifts up and then this is quite a contraption so this is the buttonhole foot and it actually plugs into the machine so you put your presser foot down you put your foot, like foot down to pick that up but you have to have that plugged in and then I will probably show you how this works once I figured it out myself where you're putting the buttonhole that fabric goes sandwiches in between there and then it all works it out from there so it, was, it, it looked impressive when I was um, being shown it, but that may just take a little while getting used to because obviously every machine is different. But yeah, I don't need to put the phone back in. 
So the first thing I'm going to do for setting my machine up is plug it all in. So this is the presser foot and I want to get that programmed at the back there for a thread tile function. So um, that's probably gonna be one of the first things I do. So let me just plug it in. This one, the pedal, actually has a little cable tidy on the back and I'm forever running over the wire of my foot pedals. So that isn't what caused my other machine to break by the way. But yeah, so I think that's gonna be really handy to have. Three, two, one. Now I have got um, my LED light and I've got the lights on the conservatory, but this, sorry, moving you forward. This model has two lights. So you have a light here as well as the light here. That was also another selling point for me because obviously I, my sewing room is the conservatory and in the evenings that can get quite dark. So although I do have an LED light, which I plug in, it, would, it is handy to then, you know, have something, an extra light on there as well. So first things first, I want to program the presser foot so I can trim the threads. Press the, like the tool button there. Then it says, okay, I need to perhaps skip through the menus. Oh, there we go. So that is the foot down, but I want the heel down. Yeah, I think that must be it. Hopefully, all right, so we'll go, okay. Then I want to select thread trimming. So I'm just gonna go through the menu options. Ah, oh, there we go. Scissors, setting completed. The foot is set, preset to do reverse stitches and so I wanted to set that to trim thread. Now, the first, oh, the first thing I need to do is wind a bobbin. I've got three bobbins with this. So I will need to get some more because although the man in the shop did say my other ones may fit this, he said there's there's a slight difference and it could affect the tension, which I don't want to mess around with. So let me just get some thread. This automatically starts winding the bobbin as soon as, oh, and it's, it's done that already and it just clicks off. You can obviously stop it if you need to or just flick it, I think, if you don't want to wind a full bobbin. Just had a quick read through of the manual and what I want to do is set, so, when I start sewing something, it's gonna go forward, reverse, and then forward again at the start and the end of sewing. So in order to do that, I press this button here, and it's as simple as that. If you press it again, it will just go in one way and stitch on the spot, I think, but I want it like that. So I'm gonna hit okay, and I think that means that that's programmed in now. So I'm going to give it a go. I've got some calico. I don't have lots of scrap fabric, funnily enough, as I got rid of loads of my fabric. So this is just a scrap piece. So I'm going to put the needle down, put the foot down, put the needle down, and start sewing. Now when I started sewing it automatically then did three forward, three back and then started sewing normally. Now I've stopped. The presser foot actually has a pivot function which means it slightly raises so I can turn it around without actually touching it. I don't need to lift the presser foot up. Once I start sewing again, it will lower it down if you watch. See, and it's gone again. If I think, okay, I'm coming to the end of it now, I want to finish that, I'm going to hit the reverse button and that should pick up what I've put in the memory. So I'll just stitch a couple more, hit reverse, that's going back, and then it should go forward, forward, and then it trims, and then puts the foot up. So if you can see, you probably can't see because it it's really bad lighting in here at this time of night. So it's slightly darker here and slightly darker here. So this is where I start uh, and start and finished. And so it's got those sort of stitches to reinforce the seam at either end. And you could, that's something you can program in. You don't have to have that, that, but for me, that is gonna be really handy. I just realized I couldn't shut this properly. There was a gap and I thought, oh, that's not right. That's because when I put the attack, the feet, back in, I put them down, I put them the wrong way around, so they were poking out 
stopping this from shutting properly. So as you can see, it does sit all flush. We've got the speed dial here, which I'm used to. My last few machines have had the speed dial on there. So you can manually cut the threads. That's what the yellow button is for. So that's thread cutter, needle down, press the foot down, locking stitch, reverse stitch, and obviously that's your start stop button if you don't have your foot pedal plugged in. There is a knee lift as well, but I'm just working things out at the moment manually. Hi, it's Monday. I thought I would just pop on because I've used the machine, but I've also unpackaged the extension table. Now the legs pop open like they do on most extension tables, then you can sort of like adjust it there so it folds flat. But I thought I'd just show you how it compares because I do have an extension table for my brother F420. Um, and so this is the brother one. Um, let me just line them up. So can you see the Juki is a lot bigger. So, I mean, I'm not a quilter, but if you are a quilter, that is a good size extension table to have. So it's a lot bigger than my previous one. I mean, I don't really use extension tables. I think I used um, an extension table when I made curtains last year, but it's not something I regularly use. But obviously if you do, then that might be quite a useful feature to have. I will do probably an update video once I've made some things and I've used the machine a lot more. So this is just a quick overview if you're interested in the Juki or just interested in different brands of sewing machines because I know I am, if you don't own a particular one, it's quite interesting to see what else there is around. So I will keep you posted so make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you soon while I play on my machine in the meantime. Thank you for watching.